there, welcome back. So we're gonna trim our soup tureen bowls. You're gonna need some clay for worms, your needle tool, a soft finishing rib, and a trimming tool of some sort. I prefer these Dolan tools because they are stay sharp for a long time, and they are just super great tools to have. Dolan is the name of that tool. A bucket of water, um, and what we're going to do is start by recentering this pot upside down. So there's two uh, ways that I go about doing this or teaching in the beginning. Um, and one is tapping to center. So what I'm doing is tapping as it comes close to my right hand because that's my dominant hand. Uh, I'll tap gently while I'm looking at the periphery of the... Um, top of the pot, which in this case is the bottom of the pot, um, and then I'll draw a line to kind of double check myself and see how close I got. The other way to do this is to draw a really, like get it as close to center as you can. Draw a really light line with your needle tool and what you're looking for is for that line that you draw to be the same distance to the edge of the foot um, that you can get it. So if you've got a skinny side, you've got less clay. If you've got a thick side of your circle, you've got more clay. So you're going to move it in the direction of the skinny side of your circle where you have less clay. Do it a little bit at a time, not by leaps and bounds, uh, or you'll be there all day trying to recenter your pot. Um, and erase your line and you know keep going until you've got it consistent all the way around and then you're gonna lock it down with your nice soft clay for worms and I usually do this at four points so you know two on each side one on each side and then um, kind of split the difference uh, on the opposite two sides you'll see here in a second what I mean by that One other thing I want to mention, when you're um, using clay to create your worms, you want them at a soft stage, kind of fresh out of your bag. Um, if they're too dry, they'll crack like this, and that is no bueno. Uh, that means that they won't stick to your pot or your bat. So get that nice squishy stuff, um, not super duper saturated, because then it's just going to make a mess on your pot, but where you can bend it and it won't crack. A okay. All righty, so we're locked down and we're going to start trimming. We're starting with the circumference of the foot. So I've got my large loop tool um, held with both hands and my fingers are pretty close to the neck of the tool so that I have a lot of control. And um, as I establish this foot ring, I'm keeping in mind how narrow I make it uh, in juxtaposition to the width of the rim. If you make your foot super narrow and you have a very wide rim, it will be tipsy uh, when you flip it over. So just keep that in mind. Um, once I get that foot ring established, the circumference, uh, I'll come back through the bottom underneath the foot ring and I'm going to find that curve of the bowl. So I'm holding the tool when I do that at an angle pointed away from the bat, so or the center of the wheel would be a clearer way to say that. Um, so what you want is to make sure that that tool is underneath your foot so you're not carving away the foot you just established and you're holding the tool at an angle to find the curve of the bottom of the bowl. And you can move your tool nice and slow until you find a curve that you like. Um, this is how you get weight out of your pots, and it just really is practice. If you find in the end that you flip it back over and it's still heavy and you have clay there, by all means recenter it and trim away some more. Um, and then the other thing I want to mention is that I tend to like rounder, softer swoops in the curves of my feet, so I will come in 
with the large curve of this loop tool that I'm using and I'll come up underneath that foot ring with the tool pointed at an angle um, away from the center of the pot but in the opposite direction that you see it now and I'll make that um, less square. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second here. Our next step is to trim out some of the bottom. So I hold this tool in both hands. Again, I start with the small part of my loop tool because it's easier for me to see where the tool is in reference to the edge of the foot. Um, but you could, use, again, any which way you want to hold this tool is fine as long as you've got it held in both hands. Um, so I established kind of a little valley right here, or um, like a little trench, and then I'm going to carve out the remainder of inside of this foot um, from the center to the right because that's the way my wheel is spinning. I try not to take the tool over toward the left because then the tool is fighting the clay. So just keep that in mind. Whichever way your wheel's spinning, you're really only working on half of um, that circle if you look at it that way. So another thing I want to mention too is um, to carve out the middle here, you want to tip your wrist up. You don't want to have it flat because then you're going to hit with the um, the handle of the tool. So if you notice, I've kind of got my wrist at a tipped upwards at a little bit of an angle. Um, and so we'll go ahead and carve this out until I've got it as thin as I can safely make it. So how do we make it thinner without trimming through the wall? I'm so glad you asked. The way that I tell people, my students, is that if you kind of push on your pot as you're trimming, so stop it periodically and give it a little bit of a push, um, you can feel if it's springy or if it's solid. So I call it like a ripe fruit test. If you're looking at a mango in a store and it's very, very solid, there's no give, you know that mango is not ready to eat. If you feel the, that mango and it's squishy and soft, you know that it's ready to go and um, the same applies in the trimming. If you push on the pot and it's rigid, you know that you can trim a little more away. If you push on the pot and there's any kind of give or bounce or squish to it, it's getting thin and or it's too wet to trim. One of those two things would be the case. Um, in either case, you want to stop trimming. So, you know, as you go along, just kind of do those push tests so you don't trim through the bottom of your pot. And then last but not least, we're going to take our soft finishing rib and a tiny bit of water, not a ton. I'm not looking to resaturate this pot. Just clean it up a little bit from those tool marks that I made and I'll go over all those areas that I trimmed. Okie dokie, so now we've got the lid centered the same exact way we centered the bowl. I'm taking um, my large loop tool again, just a tool of preference. If you have a different tool you prefer, um, by all means, 
go with that. Um, we're going to trim this lid completely round. So I'm just taking this off in sections. Um, I use really primarily the middle of my tool and hit um, kind of these edges that are established and then slowly move my tool down doing my ripe fruit test along the way. At the end I'll take my rib and clean up those tool marks just like I did on the bowl and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to throw a little knob on the top of the pot as opposed to hand building one or throwing them independently. So next we're on to putting a little knob on this lid. A few things I want to mention. My clay that I'm making this little cone out of is really soft. That's very important. My lid is leather hard, also very important. My lid is not trimmed too thin, also very important. Those three things are the three most important things if you're throwing a knob on a lid directly. Um, if it's too wet, it'll collapse. If it's too thin, it'll collapse. And if your clay is really hard, the little cone that you have there, it will um, be a big giant struggle bus. So try to keep those three things in mind if you're doing it this way. You can throw your knobs independent of the lid. This is not the only way to do it. This is just one way that I'm showing you. So I'm forming this into a cone and what I'm going to do is slip and score this onto my lid and then with really wet fingers and a pretty quick wheel speed, um, a lot of water, I'm going to cone this up with my fingers and cone it down. And then from there I can really experiment with um, playing around with the shape of my knob by if I want to make a waist in the knob, then I pinch with really wet fingers from the outside in. Um, if I want to make a little divot in it, I would push. I mean, it. you know, it, it's just where you pinch um, these things is to where the waist and the bulk of the clay stays. So um, the, the key things that I can tell you about throwing these are, are those first three things I mentioned. Um, you know, lots of water, leather hard, uh, lid, and soft clay. One thing I also want to say is what you see me doing here is um, I'm kind of working the edge of this knob down towards the lid so that I don't have that um, space in between the clay that I just added and the lid. It'll just help the transition of those two things um, and the likelihood that you're trapping air there um, it'll diminish those possibilities. And right here is where you can see where you're pushing and pulling that lid um, in terms of like giving it some shape. You can pinch it at the bottom to make a waist. You can kind of round your fingers around the top to make it look sort of like um, the UT turret sort of shape. Uh, I would just play around with different, um, there's a variation of different knobs that you can throw just depending on where the pressure of your fingers is. Just again, a lot of water. And then give that, um, a final refinement with your rib, get all that excess water off of there, and any last shaping you want to do. Alright, so my next step here is to make some handles for the side. I'm going to put four handles on this little terrine to make it extra special. And um, when I'm doing these, I roll out a big thick coil and I'm going to cut each of the handles off of the first piece that I cut from my coil so um, that they're all the same size. And I'm kind of rolling these out in my fingers um, 
into sort of a dog bone shape. As I roll them, I roll and give it a little quarter turn, roll, give it a little quarter turn, and work my way down that coil as I go along. That way it's not flat before you want to flatten it out. Um, and then to get the bend in my handle, I slowly kind of work it underneath. You see here underneath there with my thumb, and that will give it the curve um, to attach to the pot. Okay, once you've got all your handles completed and you want to do them all at the same time, not one at a time, so you can see how close in shape and size they are um, and make adjustments. It's easier to do that off the pot than on. Um, I'm trimming a little bit off the top here and that's to make it level for the pot to attach to the pot easier. And I'm going to trim the bottom at a little bit of an angle. Um, and then what I'm going to do is take my thumb and push that angle up just a little bit more um, because I can see where there's a gap in between where the handle and the pot meet. And I'm looking to close that distance as much as possible before I slip and score this guy on. So, you know, just do these last little bits of refining because um, the less refining you have to do on the pot, in terms of the shape uh, and connection points of your handle, the better off you are. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll mark this handle with my needle tool and I'm marking the top and the bottom of each connection point. So the top and the bottom of the top of the handle and the top and the bottom of the bottom of the handle. And that will tell me where to score on the pot. Um, and so I'm going to slip and score both the handle and the pot and I'm just using water for slip, that's fine. If you have your own fancy slip, you can use that as well. And we're gonna attach these one at a time. Um, once I get this attached, I'm gonna come through with a little bit of water on my finger and really refine any marks I've left behind, the connection points. Um, and basically what I'm doing here is just smoothing away um, you know, the, the rougher edges, since it's pretty close to the shape that I want before I attach it. It's worth mentioning to you that I do a lot of extra refining and fussing with my handles even though I have the shape um, and form of them pretty much done when I attach them to the pot. Um, so I'm coming in with my needle tool and working that connection at, as probably a little bit more OCD than I really need to, um, but I embrace this. And also, um, I'm coming in with my rib as well. Mm -hmm. 
lastly, we're going to put a hole in this to make space for the ladle. Um, you'll notice that I've got some slip decoration on this. It's inspired by a potter named L Rene Lepresti, um, who makes beautiful pots. Um, I'll show that in a separate video for sake of not making this one too, too long. Um, I'm going to draw a shape here. Um, any shape will do. I'm going to make mine kind of an art shape. And then I'll, I'll take the lid off of the pot and as if I were peeling a piece of fruit is how I like to describe cutting. Um, you're going to cut towards your thumb and I'm going to cut the shape that you see here out. And then I'll come back through with a um, cosmetic sponge and um, kind of refine that cut a little bit. And then I'll come through after that with my finger and a little bit of water to recompress all those fine particles of clay back down into themselves so that it's not so gritty um, because that shows through in the glazing process. Um, and that's that, and then your terrine is done.